Hey guys, I've got a really exciting one for you today. Inside this plain brown box here houses the very latest and greatest flagship head unit from Joying. And this head unit has eight gigabytes of RAM with its eight core CPU. It has a massive 15 inch display at 1080p full HD resolution and it runs Android 12. Let's check it out. Now, Joying doesn't need any introduction. They are, dare I say it, the kings of the universal Android head unit. Now, they do also make head units for uh, specific brands of cars where you can get the dash trims and the canvas decoders and etc. with the actual Joying unit, but they also make some of the most beautiful universal Android head units. And universal means that it will go into pretty much any car which has a single DIN or double DIN enclosure. This is one of those. This is a universal double DIN massive screen Android head unit. Now they do offer this particular head unit in various different sizes and in single and double DIN. But this one is a double DIN one because I'm gonna be installing in the Saab or trying to because it is absolutely massive. Uh, this is definitely the biggest Android head unit that I have ever installed. So it's gonna be very interesting for me to stick it in and, and see what it's like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this box, I'm gonna show you what's inside, and then I'm gonna go and stick it in the car. Uh, but before I do, please remember that I don't get paid to endorse any company or products, including uh, this join unit. These videos are more so that you can get a feeling for my opinion when I'm using them. Right, let's go and do that now. And here it is, and yeah, as you can see, it's an absolutely enormous looking tablet type thing. And in the typical drawing way, it's absolutely beautiful, really, really well designed, but look how thin it is. Like, this is the thinnest Android head unit screen I have ever, ever seen, which is quite a considerable thing considering the sheer size of it, because it's also the biggest Android head unit screen that I have ever seen. Anyway, let's have a closer look. To the front of this screen, is literally just a screen. There's a very slim bezel that goes all the way along the edge. And you've got a couple of coils up here and here, and I assume they are for the built-in microphone. And then if we just turn it around, if you haven't seen these clips before, they are standard join. You'll find them on all join head units. Also on the back here, you have a single connector. That is this one here. And that's to connect it to the main doubled in unit, which brings us to the main doubled in unit. Let's have a look at this. So on the front here, we have a ribbon cable. You have a reset button just down here. You have a micro SD card slot. It looks like just down here. And obviously the mounting holes for the screen. On the top, we have a wiring diagram, but all the magic happens on the back. This wire here is for the 4G data SIM card if you want to install one. Then we have a USB port, which is hardwired in. We have this wire here, and as you can see, it says can out, and the other side says key. And the point of this is it allows you to choose between standard canvas, which is like for steering wheel control, and advanced canvas, which is where it can be compatible with climate control and detecting whether your doors are open and at reverse sensors and all the other items that are on your car's digital network, if your car's compatible with that. So you can choose that by swapping the wire from key to can in here. Also over here we have camera power, we have the center RCA channel and a front camera input as well. Then over here we have the GPS antenna input, we have two 4G mobile data antenna inputs, we have the FM radio antenna, we have the external mic input, we have two USB ports, and then we have an array of RCAs. The first three are the video and audio auxiliary input. So we have the subwoofer, front left, front right, rear left, rear right. And the last one here is a SPDIF coax digital output. And over here, we also have an optical SPDIF digital output as well. So what we're talking about here is both coax and optical digital SPDIF outputs digital outputs. That's something you only get on very, very expensive premium head units. It gives you that perfect digital signal to an amplifier, 
which won't have any noise. It's kind of a lossless signal. It's awesome. Okay, I'm gonna derail this video for a second. I'm in post-production. I've already recorded all the material for this video, but I was just on Join's website and it appears that this head unit is supposed to have an HDMI port. And I have it here and there quite clearly isn't any HDMI port and you saw me do the unboxing and there is no HDMI port. I contacted their customer service and I said like, what's the deal with this HDMI port? It doesn't have one. And they said, yes, it does. And guess what I had to do to find it. This has a screw on the top here. There's a screw on the back here and there's a screw on the other side here. And then you peel off the top so you're opening it up now i did say to them you're asking people to void their warranties and they said no 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 you're not going to void your warranty anyway let me show you why you're doing this have a look inside can you see it there <laughs> that is your hdmi port inside the head unit this hdmi is actually natural progression for android head units remember a lot of these android head units including joying only have analog composite video outs to go to the rear monitors. So, and having an HDMI gives you a digital and audio connection to rear monitors through that one digital cable. So it was a good idea, very, very good idea for them to add the HDMI in. However, I've just recorded a really, really positive review where this is probably my favorite Android head unit. And they did this, <laughs> so it's weird. So yes, Awesome, Joying. Thank you very much for adding the HDMI. Now, if you can just finish this so that people don't need to open it to actually get to it, that'll be amazing. Right, before I put you back to the video, let's just go to the studio quick and see if the HDMI port works. So here we go, guys. In here, we have a HDMI, which is going directly into the Joying main board. And it's going to my monitor, which is uh, just here. And there we go, as you can see, it is being mirrored on this monitor. It's running at a 1080p resolution. So if you have some HD monitors for your kids on the back headrest, or if you're running a camper van or something and you wanna have the ability to watch stuff through the head unit, totally possible with the HDMI cable. And that means that, for example, if we wanna go to Netflix, we can just pick something to watch and it's gonna send it through. The other benefit, of course, is that the HDMI also has audio. So it's gonna send audio to the second screens as well. So that is awesome. It would be even more awesome if the socket was on the outside of the unit though. Anyway, back to the main video. Right, let's see what else is in the box. So in the box are two cameras. So this joining a head unit actually comes with a front and a rear camera included in the box. And I've never seen a head unit come with two cameras. They appear to be AHD high definition cameras as well. So you're really getting your money's worth with this. Um, that, that, that is awesome. So we have some manuals. Then we got the external microphone, two 4G antennas, the GPS antenna, two USB extensions, and a ISO main loom. So this is a very interesting head unit. I'm quite excited to see if I can actually get it to fit in the car. Let's go and do that now. Here we are sitting in my Saab 9.3 and as you can see, I haven't quite put the screen into the car yet. I have installed it, I've wired it in, but the screen is not attached. And the reason for that is because I kind of wanted to just explain some of the nuances of installing a large screen, especially uh, something like this. Now, some of the larger screen units will come with a hinge and the hinge will allow you to sort of move it up and down. But the problem with that is that it adds a massive component to the back of the screen, which ultimately means that the screen comes out quite far from the dash. And when you're dealing with quite a big screen like that, uh, it is quite obvious that there's something behind it and it's not as neat. Uh, so what Joying have done is they've created this very skinny, thin screen. And the idea behind it is to push up against the dashboard so it looks like a kind of factory system. But that does come with an issue, of course, because this screen takes up quite a lot of real estate. And that means that if uh, there's anything sort of sticking out of the dashboard, that might prevent the screen from clicking into place. And what you might see in this particular car is that I would normally have the two knobs to control the vents. And what I've done is I've removed them. Uh, because the knobs were actually preventing the screen from pushing into place because it is going to overlap that area. Anyway, without further ado, let's uh, 
plug it in and uh, go from there. Okay. And there you go, that massive 15.1 inch screen is now installed in my car. And if you've owned a Saab 9.3 and you've ever wondered what it would be like to have a 15.1 inch screen in your car, this is what it looks like. Well, let's switch it on and see how long it takes to boot up. It's on now. And there we go. So a couple of seconds and you're straight to the dashboard, no boot up time. And the interesting thing about this head unit is that when I got it out of the box and I turned it on for the first time, it did exactly the same thing. It's like a two second boot time. So it obviously doesn't require a consistent 12 volt connection for it to boot up. Also on the subject of installation, being a doubled in unit, it did just screw directly into the standard fitting kit for this car. And of course the harness with the steering wheel control adapter works perfectly fine as well. As you can see, I can uh, control the volume and I can change the tracks and everything using my steering wheel controls. So that was all very much plug and play and that is fabulous. Right, let's talk about the look and feel of this massive joying head unit. Let's we'll start with the screen quality itself. So the screen massive 15.1 inch display runs at a resolution of 1080p and everything is crystal clear and really really sharp and it's vivid as well anyway moving on to software you can see that joying has opted for this dashboard here it looks like their own i've never actually seen it before on any other head units so you've got three main widgets up here you've got navigation music and radio so the first widget here is navigation and you'll see that it has three buttons search home and work and they don't really actually do anything. All of them just open Google Maps. So you touch anywhere on navigation and it will go directly uh, to Google Maps. The music widget here is to play local music. So if you have a micro USB card with loads of MP3s on it or even a USB stick, they will appear in this application here so that you can play your music back. And over here uh, we have radio and this is how you control the radio. Again, it all looks very nice. Um, it does have RDS and you can see that this is the heart radio station that's playing pop music so that data is there but like a lot of Android head unit brands when you save the station into the memory it saves it under the radio frequency and not the name of the radio station it doesn't save it under heart it saves it under 102.7 tremendously annoying and i really do not know why it's so difficult for manufacturers to make sure that the actual presets are under the name of the radio station rather than the actual frequency but that's not the end of the world at the end of the day you can save your radio stations on these presets then along the bottom we have bluetooth which is so that you can look at your contacts and make calls You've got video where you can watch local video files that you would have on USB sticks or the micro SD card slot. And then you have the instructions for this unit in a PDF format so that you can read about how you can do certain things. Now, the only customizability about this particular dashboard is that you can change the widgets if you so wish. So for example, if I didn't want to have music, I can touch this and I can have a compass instead or I can change it to the long latitude and latitude exact location details. So along the left hand side here, you have the home button, we're already on home, and then we have the applications here, and you have all of your applications shown exactly like this. Then you have your settings, and again, Joying have set up their own way of organizing all of the settings files. This is completely customized, the Joying head unit, and it is pretty nice uh, to navigate. Well, let's talk about the speed of this joying head unit. It does have a Snapdragon 6125 CPU. That's an eight core CPU. And on top of that, it has eight gigabytes of memory. So it's got tons and tons of memory, tons of speed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the usual speed tests that we do for everyday apps. I always use Waze and Spotify for this and we just see how long it takes for them to boot up. So let's try Waze. Yeah, I mean, that's practically instantaneous. It doesn't really get much faster than that. I asked it to do something, it did it instantaneously. Perfection. So let's try Spotify. Okay, so that one took a few seconds, but again, it was just a few seconds, maybe five seconds. Uh, but again, that's very, very fast indeed. So this is obviously Android and Android gives you the ability to install pretty much any app that you want. And I, that's something that I normally say when I'm reviewing these head units, because a lot of people don't understand that Android head units really allow you to install any 
apps you want, video apps, Netflix, YouTube, whatever, whatever you want. However, normally Netflix, for example, wouldn't be on the Play Store. You'd search for it and you wouldn't find it and you'd have to sideload it to be able to use it. That's not the case with this head unit because this runs Android 12. And what that means is if we go into the Play Store and we search for Netflix, you're going to find it. In fact, we can even update it because the beauty of this head unit having Android 12 is that you can have the latest version of Netflix and you can have the latest version of most apps and you can just get them normally on the Google Play Store really, really easily indeed. And there we go full access to the entire Netflix library. And naturally, it's full 1080p, so whatever you watch is gonna be literally in TV quality. It just looks absolutely fantastic. Now you might remember that this head unit came with two cameras, one for the front and one for the rear, and I did spend some time installing the front camera. So if we go into AR camera, you can see it is in nice HD quality. And this is a camera that will be used for a DVR purposes, for a dash camera. And then if we hit rear, you can see the rear camera as well. Now, truth be told, I didn't install the join camera because I already have a camera on this car. It's the Atoto 360 camera, which is why it looks weird on here. But the point is this join head unit will record from both the front and the rear camera really, really easily. And then of course, because there is a camera on the back of the car, if we put the car into reverse, then you get your reverse camera as well. Whenever you hit put it into reverse, you get that reverse camera. Anyway, let's go back to the fact that it has Android 12 because that has some special features that is really worth having a look at. So say I want to navigate, but I also want to listen to Spotify. So what I can do is I can press this button and then open Spotify. And now I have Spotify and navigation on the same screen at the same time. And it's the full version of the apps. Both apps are the full version. They're just in their own little windows on either side. And you can do this for multiple apps. Not all of them, not all apps are compatible with split screen, but a lot of them are. This is sort of like Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but a million times better. Because instead of you getting the sort of low resolution, cut down versions of the apps, you get the full version of any app on this split screen device and it is absolutely fantastic. It really, really is. Now, obviously, if we're talking about features, we do need to touch on Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Of course, this does have both of them. I actually have my Android phone connected to it at the moment. So if we go into Z-Link app here, uh, we'll be able to see that this is the full Android Auto functionality on the big screen and it looks absolutely fine. Now if we go down here into the applications you can see that you have access to all the various apps on the screen here as well just like you would for normal Android Auto and it is the newest version of Android Auto as well. You only need to connect your phone once using Bluetooth. It will automatically connect every time you get in the car. As soon as your phone automatically connects to the head unit via Bluetooth, this comes up straight away. Right, let's talk about the elephant in the room and that is of course the sound quality. So if we go into the apps and we go into sound effects, you get access to all of the sound settings on this Android head unit. So for example, you have the ability to turn on DTS if you want it and you have the ability to turn on 5.1 channels of sound. So if you're actually watching a movie on Netflix in this car, this head unit will the code into 5.1 channels of sounds proper real surround sound if you have your individual speakers set up in the front left front right rear left rear right and center because of course 5.1 does include that center speaker and it does need to be wired up at the moment i would have 4.1 channels of sound uh, that removes the center speaker it's all of the speakers plus subwoofer. That's what the point one is, is the subwoofer. Anyway, that's that's what you have. If you, if you don't have a subwoofer, of course, you would go for four channel. And what this is basically gonna do is it's going to make sure that the head unit is set up for your specific sound setup in your car. So if you go down to equalizer, and you might be forgiven for thinking that this has a 16 band graphic equalizer, but in actual fact, it has a 48 band graphic equalizer because you actually have two more pages of 16 here yeah it's absolutely crazy amount of control but there's more because these 48 bands on the graphic equalizer are only for the front left and front right speaker because if you want to do the rear left and rear right that has its own set of 48 bands that you can set and then you can do the same for the center speaker and you can do the same for the subwoofer so you can literally set this car up exactly as you want 
And funnily enough, you might notice that it says simple mode up here because this is simple mode. If you go into complex mode, then each of the individual speakers, just the front left speaker, just the front right speaker, you can adjust the individual frequencies on this graphic equalizer. That's crazy. I mean, this, this, this has more control than any, any other head unit that I have ever seen. It is just absolutely crazy. Now, if you are not a really technical person or an audiophile and you don't really want to have to deal with all of this stuff, aside from simple mode, you have system sound. And system sound is just a bunch of presets. So you've got rock, soft, classical, popular, you know, a bunch of stuff. So you can go ahead and you can choose one of these and see which one actually sounds the best for you. Nice and easy. Okay, so going into fade and balance, it's just fade and balance, nice and easy. Um, you can go into scenes, it has cinema mode, dedicated mode, music mode. So basically there's a bunch of different modes which alter the way that it sounds inside the car. Um, I, I recommend that you experiment with these and see if there's something that you like because it does, it is interesting what it does. Uh, virtual center basically gives you the ability to have a virtual center speaker. And then lastly, you have major and this basically allows you to delay the individual speakers. So you can set a slight delay to any of the speakers if you want to do that. Then you have a gain adjustment on the individual speakers if you want to adjust the gain on just one speaker. And finally, you have control of crossover settings for each of the speakers as well. I don't think you'll find a head unit which actually has as much, I mean, even Kenwood doesn't allow the level of control that this thing gives you. It's absolutely immense. You will not be disappointed with the sound of this thing. It is amazing. And that's pretty much it for this drawing head unit. It is truly amazing. Really, really good indeed. If I've missed anything, please do ask in the comment section below and I'll see what I can do about answering your questions. If there's any other head units you'd like me to review, just ask and I'll see what I can do about that. And I've got tons of additional reviews coming up. So please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already.